but a little bit of information about Tammy. She is the high school chemistry, physical science, and eighth grade science teacher at Morrison, and she also teaches STEM. And as Melody said, she is our 2020 Ag in the Classroom Teacher of the Year. Well, good morning. Uh, I am pleased to be here. And um, a little bit more information about myself is uh, I've been at Morrison for several years. I'll be starting my 17th year uh, of teaching. And I have a background in agriculture. I have an animal science degree from Oklahoma State before I became an educator. Um, my husband and I own a small diversified farm here in North Central Oklahoma. So it's what we do every day. Um, just, it's interesting to see how many of you do or do not have experience with this type of technology because it's fairly new to me too. One of the reasons I wanted to bring it to you is because uh, as we all were immediately dumped into distance learning uh, last spring, everyone was scrambling to figure out how to do that, including myself. Um, in doing that, uh, I had a little bit, just a little bit experience with a hyperdoc from uh, a young teacher who was graciously enough to share. And it took me a while to get through how to, to manage that doc, but then to actually make one myself uh, was my goal. So when this all started during distance learning, but that doesn't mean you can't use it in your classroom because I have used some in my classroom, but I was not the author of that document, the other teacher was. Um, in saying that, uh, I have up here on my screen, uh, the document that I wrote and uh, shared with my uh, kids, it was my general chemistry class, and I was trying to combine agriculture with a chemistry concept. And like most lessons, if you're writing lessons, you have a lot of thought goes into that and you have to figure out what is my objective? What do I want the kids to learn? But, but how do I get that connected and all the different parts connected? So I spent several hours at home, but when the aha moment finally came, I was so excited to share this with my students. Um, so my idea was to take something about cattle, uh, pair that with some concept in chemistry, and then I came up with the flat farmer. Now, I would like to say I'm the first one to do this, but as I researched, there are other people in other states that have used this, but in a different way, more like the elementary version of Flat Stanley. So my flat farmer doesn't travel, but what the flat farmer part of this lesson is, is they used it, and I will show you a picture a little bit later, they used it as uh, part of their scavenger hunts, uh, part of their experiments. So, and that was also a, a big struggle trying to do distance learning with science because of the experimental side. I'll talk a little bit more about that as we go. So basically a hyperdoc, um, it's out there, um, it's available as I begin to do some research, but it's kind of overwhelming when you're starting, but if you just dive in, it's really, really not that hard. And what I also learned is when I used one in my classroom is the kids were super engaged, they liked having ownership of that lesson. I was there to help them. Um, but basically a hyperdoc is a document, unlike a worksheet, that has links that you can take them anywhere. So I wanna show you, and we're gonna go through the Flat Farmer Bovine Byproduct Lesson, and I wanna show you what I mean by that. So, the first part, I'm just gonna move down through this document so you can kind of see the whole document because mine got a little lengthy because I just kept getting excited and adding more things to it. But much like a normal lesson, 
a lot of people use 5e lessons a lot of people use part of 5e lessons but basically the engagement part to let them explore and you notice the blue links that are in uh, the boxes and then the learning component what i wanted them to learn even though they were learning on their own because they were they were going different places uh, through the document on the internet and then the application um, gave them some real world uh, applications to know because oftentimes we we talk about concept but what does that really mean in life you know how does that you know we've all heard the students say when am i ever going to use this so the application part came down to looking at some careers which has been something that i do a lot with my students especially since they're thinking about getting out of high school and moving on. The share portion uh, was where they went on a treasure hunt and they just did that in their home. Um, so, and then we had a reflection time where they were connecting this to a concept that we had already talked about in class. And then there was an extension lab and I know labs, I, I I really struggled with distance learning labs. In the classroom, you could have the material set up and then they could do the extension right there. But at home, it was very difficult, but I finally found one that fit everything I was looking for. So let's look at how, from a, a student's point of view, what would this look like? So they would get their document, they would literally do their, do their document at their own pace, uh, and here is a video that I have pasted in. And so they would click on the link, watch the video, and this was a history of uh, the Chisholm Trail. And so I'm just gonna click to show you uh, how, it, how it quickly links them to the video. Uh, and then they were responsible for answering these questions. So having a student watch a video is great, but if they're not really watching for purpose, so to keep that accountability, I had come up with several questions. So as they would link to their video. To a rail line in Kansas, the Chisholm Trail was, was our state's first superhighway connecting us economically with the rest of the nation. 1,000 mile historic Chisholm Trail, known as the world's greatest cattle trail, was like a major highway in its time. The famed trail came just after the Civil War. During the war, Texas ranches were unmanaged, leaving the southern prairies packed with cattle. At the same time, markets to the east were in great need of... So I'm going to go ahead and go back to the document because I don't want to spend the whole time looking at the video, but you can see that as they click, they watch the video, and then they're able to answer the questions and i've learned doing this and getting the documents back from my students that i often ask them to put their answers in red or another color and in the instructions up here i ask them to put their their answers in a different color after looking at multiple documents that were sent back in to see it was hard to kind of find their answers so that was one thing i learned by doing um, after they would do their video, then they would uh, go to the explore section. Um, and so this is a link that takes them to an Ag in the Classroom site. And again, uh, clicking on that, there are some accountability questions. And they had to go through uh, the document and they had to read and find out the answers to the questions. So again, if you just give them the document, they may or may not read it. We all know how that works. So they went to the Ag in the Classroom resource and then um, I had them, I was trying to find some type of graphing to go into this lesson. So I took them to some statistics of Oklahoma and they were to answer the questions based on the, the numbers in these tables. So um, I did have a few questions on this uh, because they had to look for the answer. It wasn't just gonna be set right there. So here is 
the document and I think I may have pointed them to the, to the actual page or I may, if they ask, but they had to go find the statistics about Oklahoma. And so like this is one of the stats about Oklahoma that they could go look to see. So they're sorting through data, which is very important in our science class. Um, so then they had to respond to the, uh, the rank the counties, the top five counties, or list the ones that had an, a number of head of beef of cattle in this particular year. So a good... We had yeah. a question come in. Okay. Uh, when you include questions in the document like that, do you have the students answer directly on the document? Yes. So okay. they would say, um, so they would go here, for example, and they would put pepper. Uh, obviously, I asked them to put it in a different color, but I just put it in there to show you the document does move. And so obviously, when I get it back from them, it is a little bit longer, but that's okay. Uh, no one says it has to be one page. Um, so yes, they type right on there. So everything is self-contained in this one document. Does that answer the question, Emily? Yes, ma'am, thank you. Okay, great. All right, so we've uh, now had some history. We've had some uh, statistics. We've had some graphing looking at. So we'll move on down to the learning portion. Um, this particular story is about Elmer's glue, something that all kids can relate to. Um, so I asked questions like, why is there a bull on the Elmer's glue bottle? What was the Elmer's glue originally made from? Um, and number four was kind of a fun question. What did SeaWorld use it for? So those were all questions they could answer here and then they would put their answer uh, after the question. And again, I asked them to do it in a different color because I learned real quick that, that got a little difficult to find the answers as I looked at multiple documents. Okay, we have a couple of more questions coming okay. in. Uh, do you have problems with students working out of order in the document? And if so, how do you handle that? Actually, um, I don't worry about if they work outside the document. Um, I mean, I think most of my students will start here and just go unless they get stuck in, in our distance learning situation, they might text me or email me and I couldn't get back to them right then. But um, as far as the order, it's great. And I think most of them will follow it, but they might get stuck on a question and go somewhere else. But the neat thing about this is each section is um, got its own links. It's got its own questions. So if they did them out of order, there's still the component that's there that they can do. Okay. And do you, do you use Google Classroom there at Morrison or is there another platform that you use to give these to your students? We are a Google school. Uh, and so I'm creating these in, as a document in Google. Um, I'm not sure what the other platform would be. Uh, that, do they use Google or do they use something else, Emily? I am not sure what they currently use. I know um, that Jinx has used Canvas in the past, so I'm not sure on this particular person. Um, in this, in do, this, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, you're fine, but you do share it through Google Classroom. I do because we are a Google school, uh, but it's not, I don't think it's anything that you couldn't do somewhere else because it's basically a blank document and you have these boxes with questions and hyperlinks. The neat thing about this or the whole thing about a hyperdoc is it's a, it's a link in there that kind of directs their learning. So I don't know why it wouldn't work on another platform, but I've only used Google Docs. Okay, thank you. Um, we got down to the application process and I wanted something that they could actually use and they could learn. I know my high school students are always thinking about where they're going someday. I talk to a lot of them about that, um, try to help them 
open their blinders, if you may, because back in my day, we didn't have the internet to look at things. So I try to push them to go and find options today because jobs today, some of them are newer than what uh, we used to have, especially in agriculture. The, the careers in ag are, there's just so many that especially our high school students aren't even aware about. So um, I had them go out and find six different careers, uh, took them to this particular website that had um, careers with Borden's Dairy. Um, and as I was doing this, I kept thinking, okay, what kind of hands-on component can I do? So they would respond back with their uh, careers that they found. My little plug for chemistry there. Um, came back and this, is, this was to me, I thought I was imagining this being a really fun component for my students. Um, so I had them go and look at byproducts. And most of us can name several of those, but I've asked that question in class before, and they might come up with one or two, but they're not as familiar with all of the byproducts that come from cattle. So I had them uh, in the instructions, if they could, now I understand not all students of mine that were at home at this point um, had the capability of printing, but if they did, um, I asked them to um, print out the flat farmer, and I'm trying to find my flat farmer. Uh, give me just a second and I'll find it underneath the, here he is. So this is the document that I sent them. And so they had to go on a scavenger hunt, if you may, in their house after learning about beef byproducts and find a byproduct in their home. And there's so many byproducts that was something that was easy for them to do, uh, or from my perspective, it would be easy because I knew they would have something in their home. So this was uh, an example of one of my students. He sent this back to me. So the requirement was to take their flat farmer I had a flat farm her, and I had a flat farmer, so the girls chose the girl farmer, and uh, this was one of my boys who used the, the, the boy farmer, and um, I had a real debate inside of, of my thinking of whether the farmer should have overalls or not, because there's this uh, more current looking farmer. I even asked my husband what he thought about that. But um, they found their byproduct, they took a picture, and uh, they just sent that picture back to my school email. Let me get back to my document. So they went on their treasure hunt. I gave them my phone number. Uh, my, all my students were a small school, and I know that's not what every teacher in the state does. They all pretty much have my phone number anyway, so I just put it in there. They could text it to me. But the other option is I have students text to my email, and that picture will come directly to my email. So that's the other way you can do that. Um, so then I had a time of reflection uh, and this is where um, we talked about, down here I said, do you remember what type of reaction causes a precipitate? So that was a concept we had already covered in class. So even though they were at home this time, now if they were doing this in class, I could communicate with them if they were stuck on this. And even being at home, they would text me and, and if they got stuck, but we had gone over all the types of chemical reactions in my class, so they were familiar with that. So here I was bringing them back to uh, something in real life that we had talked about in class that may not have had that connection of, well, why do I need to know this? So knowing that they knew those reactions or they should know those reactions, um, I had them tell me what kind of reaction uh, what happened with this lab. 
So the lab here, if they chose to do the extension, and I know some students um, were struggling with just having milk in their home. And if that was the case, that was fine because I know at home labs during that time would be very difficult. And I was trying to find a lab that they would have access to things at home. And that's very hard when you look at your classroom and you look at your kids and knowing, yeah, they might or they might not. The two things that I came up with this was basically uh, milk and vinegar. And they would uh, put those together in their lab and they would see a precipitate form. Uh, I talked a little bit about extracting casein from cow's milk, um, gave them a little information about it gave them a YouTube video to watch on how to do the experiment. And so I would get pictures back from my students. Um, let me find my picture again. There it is. So this is what one picture that I got back from my student during distance learning. And again, if I did this in class, I could have that set up in the back. So as they got to the end of their lesson, they could simply go do that. I could look at their uh, results. We could talk a little bit about the precipitate. You can see it really well in this. One thing I ran into uh, during distance learning was not very many of the students' homes had skim milk, which was fine. So I had different amounts of precipitate, but they could still see the clumping of the casein, which is a precipitate in the reaction. So we at least had success with the distance learning, even though it might not have been as much in some instances or more in other instances. So at this point, they would have um, answered all the questions, given me their answer in each spot, sent the uh, pictures to my email. And below this, I was just going to show you there's the farmer and the farm her. Now I did, it was, it was a struggle to find a, um, a farmer uh, or a farm her. Um, that looked more up to date, uh, that didn't look too old. Uh, so I was trying to get one that they could more relate to, but these are two that I use and you notice I am giving you the website where they came from. I actually got the free copies of them, but um, it's hard to find drawings out there. And I currently have a high school student who is very artistic working on my own copies that I will use in the future. Okay, so that was the lesson that I created that um, it took me several days and it took me some aha moments, but I was very, very excited about that lesson that my students were uh, able to go through and learn how to do the hyperdocs. We do from time to time things online. We do a lot of conceptual with lecture, with, with uh, discussion, a lot of discussion. Uh, so depending on what level I'm teaching that hour. Uh, but this was, this really was a awesome lesson once I was able to send it out and they could work on their own in their different homes all over and then have success and actually learn some things that they did not know. So that was the one that I had that I actually made. Um, the hardest part as we all know when you're writing a lesson or developing your own lesson is getting all the components and getting them to um, actually go together and flow well and hit all the parts of learning you want them uh, to learn. So I would, I would like to say I'm an expert at this, but I'm not. Uh, I'm just like every other teacher trying to find a, a great 
a connected lesson that excites my students, that helps them learn something in the end. Hey, so Amy, the, we yes. have a couple of questions come in. I'll go ahead and interrupt you. Um, first of all, about how long would this particular lesson take? Well, since I did this at, while they're at home, this one might take a couple or at least a little bit more than one classroom session. You know, if the student was really engaged, I could see this one being a little bit longer once that they looked at the videos, went through and studied the, um, the uh, data in the chart, read through um, some of the links that I gave them to read information on. And then if I was doing it in class, having them were set up so I could see it taking at least uh, a little bit more than one class period to do it in class. Okay, thank you. And then another question, first of all, they said, um, this is awesome. And once you had all that together, um, could you use it as a template for future lessons and just change out the links and content, but keep Absolutely. the Absolutely, absolutely. And that's what we're getting ready to talk about. Um, so when I was thinking about doing this um, workshop, I was like, how am I gonna show them how to do this? And so I started out with uh, a slideshow, which you can do HyperDocs with slides. Uh, that's another option. Uh, but then I, I kind of, it hit me one day and I was like, well, let's do a HyperDoc to show how to do a HyperDoc. So that's what this one is up on the screen. So um, this is a template that is not mine. It is one if you go out and at this time, let me show you a couple more templates. Um, here's another one right after distance learning hit and all of our wondering about what's going on. I actually did this one first for a class and you know, we're all going, what is this and what does this mean to me? And kids were saying, we're thinking the same thing. Parents were thinking the same thing and we're still not sure exactly what it is but I just kind of addressed it right off the bat and I did it in a hyperdoc for my upper level uh, science kids. And again, videos, uh, data at the time, came from channel four, explanations, uh, what do we really know about it? What does it mean to flatten the curve? It's very much, it's very much like the other one as far as the setup, but after that I was, really excited to come back and do another one about this because this was all in the news um, they talked about this particular drug what is it what is this funny sounding word and so i sent this out to my kids after the covid one and look at the format of it it's very different but i didn't want to keep overwhelming them with the same look so you could, there's a lot of different documents out there and what I found is if you just type in HyperDoc template in a search, you will find several. And usually what they will do is they will, they'll bring up the one that you're looking at and then you'll send a request and say, I request to use this. And they were pretty quick at replying with that as well. And um, then I just make a copy and then I use my copy as my template. And just like uh, the question, yes, you can keep using it over, just make a copy and change things. Um, so I made a copy of this one, took all of the information that was in it before, made my own engage and explore and explain and elaborate to make this one. And so this took the kids through uh, exactly what is this hydroxychloroquine we keep hearing about uh, on TV or on social media or whatever. This one, I, I actually attached an Edpuzzle video. I don't know if any of you use Edpuzzle, but I use it from time to time in all of my classes. Um, it's, it's the video format that, has, that stops the student and asks questions for understanding as you go. And so what I did is I just attached a couple of sets of, cause I was like, how am I gonna get their answers back in a form that I can look at for understanding and grade? 
So I just put step four. So back up here at step four, here's where they put their answers for step four. In step five was the Ed puzzle. And of course, I went through the Ed puzzle myself to look at it to start with. And then I looked to see how many answers that they should have. And so I, I provided them like a worksheet, you may say, online to give me your answer, an answer sheet, so I could quickly go down to their answer sheet and see, you know, if they understood uh, those components. But that's another kind of template. And like I said, if you just go out and in Google, HyperDoc templates, they're out there and people are sharing them with you. I have not paid for a template. Once I get my template, then I make a copy, then I have my own copy to use because you can't use theirs, obviously. Um, so those are two more that I used. So let's go back to how do we create this? And so I wanna show you a quick video uh, that talks about how to make a HyperDoc. So I want to click here and show you this real quick. I don't think it's very long.
Okay, so hopefully that gave you some things to think about, some questions about how to get started. Um, originally, when we were going to do this in person uh, at uh, the state at the Ag, state ag department, um, I was thinking we could actually get started on our hyperdoc. Uh, with this platform, it's a little bit more difficult as far as getting started, so I could answer your questions. But hopefully, with this, this will help a little bit. So I put some live links about what is a hyperdoc some a couple of more informational tags so uh, lisa and sarah is the two that came up with a hyperdoc uh, and it's basically more of a 21st century worksheet uh, they say but it's a lot better um, says the name is one that sarah and lisa made up so as they were doing this they made it up and it's just it's used by a lot of different people so the question says, what is a hyperdoc? Uh, this is just kind of a quick look at, so what is it? It's not, it's not a substitution. It's not a digital version of a worksheet. Um, the thing about it is you can make it as interactive as you want it. You can make it as personalized as you want it to your classroom. And it definitely is engaging and facilitates uh, creativity with your students. Um, the next live link is another uh, set of information. So you can go here and you can click here and learn more about how to, to, to start one or what it is. Um, just again, if you just go in Google, um, what is a hyperdoc or hyperdoc templates, you'll find a lot of information out there. Another link that I had put in here to help you get started. Um, so here's some templates. Um, this is the basic one. I believe it's the one that um, you've seen in several of mine. So there's that same template. Um, and you notice up here at the top, it says request edit access, access. So you go on here and you click that. And I really think it was very, a very short time that I got access to this and was able to, you make a copy and then that copy is yours and you keep using it over and over. So there's others. So if you have things that you want them to do, here's uh, an animal report, a creative writing. Uh, here's an actual 5E template. So you can go through and find so many of them out there that are already made so you don't have to try to come up and make one yourself. I'm all about making and sharing. Uh, so I was going to have you go through this um, while we were in a classroom together and try some of this. Uh, I believe this one will be available to you. You can do this on your own. Um, so basically answer questions to help you get started. And one of the main things is what do I want them to know? What's my, what's my objective? Um, how are you going to introduce it? Uh, what do you want to include in it? Um, so all these questions help me get started on that first one that I did uh, on the flat farmer. Here's some more links to uh, templates for you. Uh, here's a build your own. Uh, here's the basic template. Here's a 5E template. You just, again, request access, make your own copy and begin your build. Um, I was going to have you to share out some things that you were still unclear about in class, but you can do that with a question and answer with Emily. Um, reflection piece, just to see some new ideas that you might have learned that you could use this for after going through this workshop today. Um, and then the extend portion of my lesson for you to learn how to do this was to have you actually go up and make some changes. 
So you can click on these. You can go find your own picture. You can put whatever. So if you are a full-time ag teacher, you can go maybe find animal pictures that might fit or farm pictures. Uh, if you are a science teacher, you might want a different picture. I've changed pictures on mine. Um, sometimes I'm not real crazy about what I see. So I have my own twist to my pictures. And I think that's a personal thing because your kids know you. Um, and so I do change pictures quite often. Uh, not difficult, find the picture uh, that you want and just drop it in. Uh, you can change the colors. As you notice, some of my basics had different colors. Sometimes I get into a red, white, and blue uh, mood, and sometimes I just use what is there. Um, and then uh, I was going to have you go find a YouTube to explain. So this document is really trying to help you lead yourself through making your first HyperDoc. Um, I'm always available. Um, I mean, I do. I it is fine. You can call me, text me, you can email me when you're doing this because I know when we're learning something new, it's often difficult to know what's the next step. And so that's what we're all about as teachers is helping each other learn and get better at something. Um, do you have any other questions, Emily? I wanted to go ahead and tell everybody since we have just a few minutes and we don't have any questions, which you are getting a ton of good feedback. Everybody's thanking you and saying it was awesome. Oh, great. Um, but we do have, and it actually was spurred by an idea that Tammy had that I actually um, was visiting with her, but we have a great new resource coming out. And I, I believe Melody told everybody in the chat but we have, um, we've had the specialty cropopolies in the past, um, but we actually have an ag careeropoly coming out. Um, it is with the company, so they're probably making the prototype for us to look at right now, and hopefully we'll be seeing that pretty soon, and it'll go out uh, for print. But we are really excited about that. Of course, um, there's 27 spaces on a board, so it's hard to cover every agricultural career, but I feel like we did a pretty good job of getting all the different aspects and I think that'll be a great way for teachers to share about agricultural careers in their classrooms. So anyway, thank you, Tammy, for the idea. <laughs> and it, it'll be exciting to actually see it come to light. And anyway, I think it'll be an awesome resource. I'm excited to have my students play that in my class, especially my STEM class. Yeah, she had shared about an awesome board she had in her room about agricultural careers. And anyway, conversation took off from there. But we, we really appreciate feedback from teachers and resources that they would like to see. That board is still up, too. It never left. When we all, <laughs> when we all left school in the spring, it's still there. So um, she's talking about my bulletin board outside my room. I created a um, QR code bulletin board on ag careers. And so any of the kids can walk up and, and uh, hit the QR code, but it takes them. But I had my students going through um, picking a general area of ag, and then they would um, read the QR code on their phone. They would come back into the class and they would research one particular um, career underneath that area of agriculture. It was very interesting feedback to hear from them. <laughs>